Here we go again, folks. As y'all are checking in, shout yourselves out in the comments section. Tell me your name, tell me your location, and we're going to get started in a minute, as usual. Topic is clear. Hope everybody's having a great <clears throat> day, afternoon, evening, whenever you happen to be catching this. If you are catching it on replay, you can still shout yourself out. If you're catching this live, you can shout yourself out right now. I'll introduce myself in a minute, and then we're gonna get into we're gonna get into the business that we need to get into here. Let me make sure my comment is pinned, and then we're gonna get to what I told you we was getting to. I told you that was, this was coming up in my story here today, and people will come in as they come in. I'm gonna take one more sip of water, then we're gonna get to this. Sapphire says, used to watch the ball handling videos shout out to everybody who used to watch the basketball videos in the youtube days that was let me see when i stopped putting basketball videos up. i stopped putting basketball video out like 2015 so shout out to everybody who was watching me at least from 2015 so we're gonna get started in 10 9 8 i'll take one more sip of water and get into the business So everybody, for those of you who are not, who don't know me, not familiar with me, those of you may, even those of you who do, always introduce myself so you know who you're talking to. My name is Dre Baldwin. I'm a former nine-year pro athlete. Basketball was a sport. I uh, played in eight different countries over the course of, like I said, nine years. I created this whole brand, this philosophy, this framework, this business that is called Work On Your Games, all about taking the, the mental tools and the strategies and the skills that you need to succeed in professional sports and applying those tools at work and in everyday life. We do that several different ways. One of the ways is through writing. I've written 31 books. So you see some of those books behind me. Another way is through podcasting. I got a daily podcast called Work On Your Game. If you want to hear me give full context to anything you ever heard me talk about, that's what that's the best place to get it. Another way is through speaking gigs, also through coaching courses, and a lot of other things that I do. You can find out about that later. One of the ways is through live streams, like what I'm doing right now, talking directly to my audience. I've always been a person who talks directly to the audience, responds to comments, and you know talks to people live on the spot and all that. So that's what we're talking about. That's what we're going to do today. The topic today, that's, this changes, is how to stop lying to yourself. This is an important point, especially for those of you who are entrepreneurs, those of you who are building your brands and building your businesses and you're the boss and you might be the only employee at the same time. It is very important. It is super important for those of you who are the entire entity of your business or if you're the head of your business, you're the one who makes all the final decisions. It's very important that you aren't lying to yourself because if you're fooling yourself and you're telling yourself things that are just simply not even about it being uh, true, but not accurate. Because you could consider something to be true to you, and I could think that it's false to me. We could have a difference of opinion. True is all, often about based on opinion, the way that people use it these days. When we talk about accuracy, that's not a matter of opinion. And if you're lying to yourself and you are operating by what I call inaccurate formulas, you are setting yourself up for failure. And it's very important that you are able to identify when you're doing this because if you do it too often or for too long or you could do it one time in the wrong situation it can mean the end of your business it can mean the end of your opportunity out here so let's talk about it so you know exactly what I'm talking about I saw this um, I saw somebody make this post on Instagram the other day I saw it It was like a uh, I'm not sure if it was an ad or it was somebody I was following I don't know I don't follow that many people but someone had this post where she was putting up some affirmations that women could use. It was specifically for women, and it was about body image. And the direction that she was going in was, uh, the number on the scale doesn't matter that much. I am enough. I'm good enough, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the stuff that females like to say to themselves or tell each other to say to themselves, these empowerment comments. And I'm not saying they're necessarily wrong. Some of you men may do it as well. And so that's one thing that got me thinking in this direction then. It wasn't just that, because that's not new. That's, that's, that's the kind of stuff that's been going on forever. But I was on Twitter like three days ago, and I saw this ad for, it was Gatorade. 
you know Gatorade the soft drink right that people drink when they're working out Gatorade has this new product called Gatorade Fit I don't know what the difference is between regular Gatorade and Gatorade Fit I didn't read the ad but in this Gatorade Fit ad there was this girl who was she was doing she was doing yoga and it was a it, she was a BBW this woman was like is a, is a black woman she was in all compression gear, kind of like yoga gear, like workout gear, kind of stuff y'all see girls on Instagram all the time. I go to my Instagram Explore feed, this, they show me all these pictures all the time. So she was dressed like that. This woman had to be about, I'm, I weigh about 180, 185 pounds, give or take, somewhere between 175 and 185. This woman had to be about 200, she this woman had to be about 210 to 225 pounds. She was completely overweight. She was if she was to go to a doctor, the doctor would, uh, the doctor would give her a what's the word? He would prescribe that she is clinically obese. This woman was clinically obese, but she was doing she was doing yoga and doing handstands and exercises in an ad for Gatorade Fit. And I'm looking at this like, what what the hell does this woman and her body have to do with being fit? That it had nothing to do with it whatsoever. But this is the kind of stuff that's going on these days is that we have this wave of people just doing anything that they want to do that is just you no know, affirming and validating to them, but it's not accurate, is not based in any level of truth that any reasonable, logical person would agree to, and nobody wants to say anything. Nobody's saying anything to these folks. And this, what I'm going to talk about here today is about you specifically, and it's more around you know, your business and the results that you're producing is not about you know, your opinions and what people put in ads, but those ads or those posts that I saw got me thinking about what I'm going to talk about here today because the same problem that Gatorade has, where Gatorade has, how many people work at Gatorade? Gatorade is, I think Gatorade is either owned by Pepsi or Coca-Cola, one of those companies. So they got thousands of people who get paid a whole lot of money and they hire these big marketing firms to help them put together their advertising campaigns. You're telling me all those smart people with all their college degrees and all of their credentials and their offices and their business suits and all the money that they make, nobody in that organization said, wait a minute, why would we put an obese woman in an ad for a product that's about fitness? That makes no sense. But they went and did this. Now, I know why they're doing it. We all know why they're doing it because the wave these days is all this wokeness and affirmation and anything anybody wants to do or think or feel, we're supposed to validate it and affirm it and nobody's supposed to say anything to another person like, hey, that's stupid. Hey, a boy can't be a girl. A girl can't be a boy. Hey, you're fat. We're not going to put you in an ad for fitness. Why don't we get somebody who's actually skinny and has muscles and is in shape? Not has muscles, but has uh, some muscle tone and is in shape and muscle tone that we can see. Uh, nobody wants to say anything these days because everybody's just validating everybody even when they're doing something stupid that makes no sense. Well, not here. That does not happen here at Work On Your Game. So we're going to solve that issue for all of you here today, how you can stop lying to yourself. And if you ever catch yourself lying to yourself, what to do about it. So let's talk about it. And anybody who has a comment or a question, I will address them all at the end of this live. So if you have a comment or question, go ahead and post it. And then just watch to the end and I'll address everything at the end. So let's get right into it. Point number one, we are talking today about how you can stop lying to yourself. Number one thing. You must, absolutely must, especially you all who are entrepreneurs, you must have a system for objectively measuring yourself and your actions. Let me pause on that because I want that one to sink in with all of you. You must have a system for objectively measuring yourself and your actions. Your system of measuring yourself is not how do you feel. Your system is not what your personal opinion is. Your system is not what you think, th how you think things should be. Your system needs to be something that is objectively and accurately telling you the truth about what's going on for yourself, whether it is for your money, your finances, your fitness, your relationships, your business, your brand, whatever. You need a system for objectively, this is the key word, objectively measuring what is going on in your world and in your business. Now, here's the problem with objectivity and this is the reason why I'm being so uh, I'm being I'm emphasizing so much that word objectively because in episode 1800 on my podcast I talked about how objectivity became the new controversy that's the problem that we have these days is that you can't objectively tell anybody anything because people take every people will take anything that you say that's objective if it's not validating and affirming of what they already believe and they'll push back against you even when you're telling them something that will actually help them 
oftentimes in life, especially these days, a lot of times people will tell you things that make you feel good, but will not help you do good. And it's very important that you understand the difference. I can tell you a whole bunch of things right now that will make you feel good, but are not going to help you do good. Question is, which one do you want? Do you want to feel good and fail, or do you want to maybe sometimes take a splash of cold water in the face and do good and get things that are going to help you get to success in your life? And this is a question that you must answer for yourself. And you answer it through your actions, not through your words. Because everybody says, hey, everybody says, hey, I want things that are going to help me do good, but then they live as if they only want things that are going to make them feel good. Somebody asking me, uh, well, I'll address all of those questions at the end, but uh, Keith Norton, the question that you're asking had nothing to do with what I'm talking about right now. So if that's what you want to talk about, I'm probably not even going to address those questions. But ask me a question that's relevant to the subject if you have one. But again, I'll address those all at the end. Objectivity, folks, is about looking at something that is clear, black and white, and getting a dispassionate, getting dispassionate feedback on what you are doing. And if you are running a business, a business, you must get this passionate feedback because the scoreboard in business is what the market is saying. It is not what your friends say. It is not what your family says. It's not even your personal opinion. Did everybody hear what I just said? When you're running a business, your personal opinion is not objectivity. Your personal opinion is not the market. When you're running a business, the scoreboard, the thing that you're basing it on is what the market is saying, i.e. the people who you are actually trying to sell your products and services to. That's how you get to the business. Right? And if you want to be in business, then you better have an objective way of measuring what you're doing. Because if you don't have one, uh, you're going to be in trouble. Actually, you're not going to be in trouble. What you're going to be is out of business. So what we're talking about here in point number one what is your system this current wave of affirming and validating everything that you want to do or everything that somebody else wants to do just because because it makes them feel good and they'll be happy and they'll thank you because you affirmed and validated them absolutely not so when I saw this ad for Gatorade Fit and it had this clinically obese woman in a Gatorade Fit ad I thought to myself okay somebody told the people at Gatorade because it's not the woman's fault I mean she wanted to get the gig she got the gig I, I would take the gig too if I was her I'd take the gig I'd take the check Give me the money, Gatorade. I'll do the Gatorade Fit ad. No, so what? Well, they, I don't know if I'll take the ad to be a woman, but if they write in the check, hey, I'll take the check too. But somebody over there needs to say something to somebody somewhere else because who's going to buy that? I'm not buying that product based on that. If that's what they're considering to be fit, well, I don't want to be that. <laughs> it's taking me in the wrong direction. That ain't going to work. You can't run your business like this. Now, Gatorade, again, they're owned by either Pepsi or Coca-Cola. They got millions of dollars in the vault when it comes to marketing. They can afford to make mistakes. You cannot you can't afford to do what they're doing so make sure you're not make sure you're not doing the same thing that they're doing so when you see Amazon or Apple or Gatorade or what's one of these other big companies you see some big company doing something that seems to not make any sense and the kind of things that I'm calling out right now you can't afford to do the same things that they do because they can afford to make a mistake they got the money to spend a hundred grand on an ad that doesn't work can you afford that Can you afford to spend a hundred grand on an ad that doesn't work to put $100,000 or even $1,000 in the marketing of a product that's not going to sell, you can't make that kind of mistake. You need to be measuring every single thing that you're doing. So here's the question. How do you know that your idea is working? You have an idea that you're trying to execute on right now. How will you know if it's working or not? Before you even put it out to the world, how will you know that it's working? How will you know that it's not working? If it's not working, how will you find out? Raquel, I appreciate the badge. Thank you. How will you know... If you made a mistake, how will you know if something's working? What does working mean to you? Does working mean I feel good about it? Does working mean my aunt and my grandma like it? Does working mean your social media followers are applauding you but ain't nobody buying anything? What does working mean for you when it comes to running a business? If you cannot answer this question, let me be clear. If you can't answer the question what it means for something to be quote unquote working, you shouldn't even be putting anything out into the marketplace because you need to know how you're going to measure your results before you start. It's kind of like if you're going to if you're going to run a race, how do you know when the race is over? How do you know you won the race? How do you know when the race is finished? How do you know when the day is done? If you don't know, then you shouldn't even be starting. This is why you need clear, objective measurements of every single thing that you're doing. But the challenge is in the world that we're living in today, objectivity is controversial now. You can't be objective anymore. You tell someone an objective truth about what they're doing, they're going to say, you're judging me, you're bashing me, you're, you're being negative towards me, you're tearing me down, when actually what they're doing is giving you something that will actually help you. 
Again, the problem is these days, a lot of people rather hear things that make you feel good, but are not going to help you do good. Which one do you want? And I'll let all of you know, in, in case, again, any of you who's new in this world, over here at Work On Your Game, I'm going to tell you things that are going to help you do good. You might not always feel good about them, but they will help you do good if you can be, if you are coachable enough to accept it when somebody tells you something that's not validating your idea. I work with entrepreneurs all the time. And often, especially when I'm talking to entrepreneurs who are relatively new or they're putting out something that's relatively new, like, listen, that's not a good idea. All right, that's not a good business model. That's not going to work. All right, that's not going to sell. People are not going to buy that. People might buy it, but they're not going to buy it from you because of who you are and where you're coming from. You don't have the credibility to sell this or to offer this or be talking about this. You can sell something, but you probably shouldn't sell that. I talk to entrepreneurs and have conversations with, with them about things like this all the time. And I tell it to them straight, the same way I'm saying it to y'all right now. And the challenge often, you know what the challenge is oftentimes? Is that I have to have these conversations many times with entrepreneurs because at first they don't want to hear it. A lot of people are just so hard-headed. All human beings, all of us are hard-headed, meaning that we need to hear things multiple times before it actually gets through to us. How many, people, how many times have you had to tell somebody the same thing over and over again before they finally listened? And I'm not talking about a child. I'm talking about a grown adult. How many times have you had to tell somebody the same stuff four or five times before they finally did it? Or do you have any friends or family members? You told them the same thing many times, and they still aren't listening to this very day. They keep making the same mistake. And guess what? The same way you could think of other people that this happened to with them, it's probably happened with you too. Maybe not everything, not the same things, but all of us need to hear stuff over and over again. This is why as kids, we did the, in kindergarten, we did the ABCs every single day. You need to hear things multiple times. We need that repetition in order for something to get through to our heads. So you need to know how your current process is going to be measured. And this should be a black and white measurable, clearly measurable, even by somebody who doesn't know what you're doing. They can look at your measurement uh, rubric and your thing and be able to say this is working this is not working because here's the clear measure here's how we know this is working here's how we know it's not working if you don't have this again you are unqualified to even get started in the race let alone or do you have an opportunity to win the race systems should be black and white and it can be black and white measurement a system can be in the form of a coach a person that you trust who knows their stuff and can tell you something a mastermind group an accountability group Something, somebody who can tell you something about yourself, somebody or something who can tell you about yourself, even when they're telling you something that is not confirming or validating you and you accepting it. That's the system that I'm talking about. Y'all need me to say that again? Did everybody hear what I just said? The system that I'm referring to needs to be someone or something that can tell you about yourself, even if they're telling you something that might not make you feel so good, but you are willing to accept it. Here's my question to everyone who's listening to me right now, even if you're watching this on a replay or something. Do you have that in your life? How many of you have someone or something or somewhere in your life that you could take the stuff that you're working on and say, hey, everybody, this is what I'm working on right now. Can you take a look at this and tell me if this is a good idea, if this is some trash, if I should keep doing it, if I should throw it away, am I qualified to talk about this? Is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? How many of you have anywhere in your life that you can go and you can get that kind of feedback? Many of you have zero. And this is the reason why you need to stop lying to yourself. If you don't have anywhere in your life you can go and get that kind of feedback, you are in a position of peril. You're in trouble. Because you could tell yourself anything, right? I mean, you've been alive, you're over the age of 18, you're probably pretty good at talking to yourself. You've been doing it for at least 18 years or whatever number of years you're alive, you've been doing it your whole life. You can rationalize pretty much anything. We are human beings, we are really, really good at telling ourselves stories. Right? This is the reason why we dominate the animal kingdom is because we can, we can think into the future, we can think into the past, and we can make up stories about anything that we want and make ourselves believe pretty much anything, regardless of what reality is saying to us. A dog or a cat or a bear, they're not capable of doing it. They can only respond to what's in front of them. Human beings, we can make up stories and believe anything that we want to. <laughs> so this is why you need to get people around you or systems around you that can tell you the truth, even if the truth might make you a bit uncomfortable. And y'all know, all know the whole thing about the comfort zone and getting comfortable being uncomfortable. The people who get to the highest levels are okay with temporary discomfort if it means long-term satisfaction many of you are not okay with temporary discomfort you want comfort in everything 
The problem is you're leaving your success to your own measurement of yourself. The problem is you are the worst person. You are the least qualified person to measure your own work. Everybody hear me. You are the least qualified person on the planet to measure your own work, to measure and judge your own work. You are the worst person to be in charge of that job. Why? Because you can't. Uh, one of my early mentors, when I first got into, when I got out of basketball, I was getting into business. She had this saying. She said, you can't see yourself in the mirror. There are certain things you can't see on you and in you that other people can see. This is why barbers don't cut their own hair. All right. Hairstylists don't do their own hair. Doctors don't perform surgery on themselves because there's certain things you can't do to yourself or see in yourself that other people can easily see. So you must fire yourself. If you have the job of assessing your own work, you got to fire yourself from that job immediately and get somebody else in that space. Join the mastermind, get a coach, you know, do something to where you're not the one making that decision and get some real people around you. Many of y'all don't have any real people around you. You got a bunch of affirmers and validators around you and people who will make you feel good. But again, they're not helping you do good. The second law of thermodynamics is the law of entropy. Anybody know what the law of entropy is? All y'all went to school, right? All right. All y'all got high school degrees. <laughs> and most of you don't know what the second law of thermodynamics is is the law of entropy which states every object is always constantly moving into a state of chaos a state of uh, not being in a coherent space meaning anything that is left to its own devices is eventually going to move towards uh, being in, in chaos and not being in order so let me give you an example when you were in elementary school and the, the main teacher wasn't there that day, you had a substitute teacher, what happened? We all knew that was like a play day, right? The school classroom would become a zoo. We could all play around because the person who's in charge, who maintained order, wasn't there. And that's how your life is every single day when you don't have something that's keeping things in order. You are always moving closer and closer towards being in the zoo because you don't have anything that's going to keep you aligned and keep you in space and keep everything uh, where it's supposed to be, keep everything you know, intact. That's the discipline. And again, you don't do this to yourself. This is why you use other people. Right? This is why relationships matter so much. This is why you need to know people. Some of y'all don't know anybody. Y'all sit around on your phones all day and you're on your looking at Instagram and Facebook and all the whatever apps you're looking at but you don't have any relationships you gotta go and meet some people shake some hands go to some conferences meet somebody know some people you need actual real life connections then use the internet not just the internet and hope that everything works out through the internet actually go make some friends some of y'all got no friends <laughs> y'all, y'all. I mean you got your family that's, that's around but they ain't doing nothing they ain't got nothing going on and then you don't know anybody you need some people around you who can keep it real with you. If you don't have who around you can keep it real with you. If you got to think about it, then probably nobody who in your life can keep it real with you and tell you the truth and you will accept it. Not they'll tell you the truth and then you argue with them, but they'll tell you the truth and you will actually accept it and listen to them. Who do you have in your life that is qualified to do that? Many of you can't name even one person and then you wonder why you're not getting the results that you want. Let's move on to point number two. Topic here today is how to stop lying to yourself. Number two, you got to get clear on your desired result and how you will measure your actions based on results, not on your feelings. Your actions should be measured based on the results that you are looking for, not on how you feel about what you're doing. What's going on, Matt? How you doing? What is your clear result? Remember that, again, if you're new around here, one of the, I got certain things that I say all the time. So if you haven't heard me say this before, listen up. You are in a performance and a results based business that's called life. It's not, not entrepreneur. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. You have a job right now. You're still in a performance based business. You got a job, you better perform or you won't have a job no more. If you're not producing results at your job, you will get fired. I know people who are, I, there's a lot of people I know who are school teachers. And if their students and their classes are not doing good and getting good grades or passing the, the aptitude test or whatever the assessment test, the state assessments and all that, what happens? The teachers get fired. The teachers get replaced or the whole school will get shut down. If the, if the students aren't performing, that's the measure of performance, right? Those are the results. If the students don't perform, then the teachers are going to get it. Well, first of all, the principal gets in trouble. Then what does the principal do? They go to the teachers and say, hey, teachers, y'all better step it up. The teachers are going to go to the kids and try to make the kids step it up. And if they fail, the teachers start losing their jobs. The principal gets replaced. The whole school might get shut down. This happens. Schools get shut down when, when the students don't perform. 
Why? Because the performance of the student is the measure, the objective measure of how good the teachers are. Even though that might not be fair, is the truth. Again, I'm not saying whether it's fair or not. I'm saying it's the truth. So you need to have an objective measure of the results of your work. If you don't have one, again, you are in a position of peril. You are in trouble right now because how are you going to measure your work? How are you going to know if what you're doing is working if you're only going off of how you feel and your own opinions? All right? You are the worst. Again, you are the least qualified person to judge your work in the world because it's yours. I mean, it's like a baby. All right? You're not going to tell. You're not going to say that your own child is ugly, but somebody else can tell you. <laughs> so you got to be able to you got to have somebody in your life who can tell you that truth and tell you to your face and that you respect enough that you will listen to them when they tell you. Now, I'm not saying with your baby, but with something that's objective. We have created this world that we're in right now where feelings and opinions are more valued than facts. And the problem with this is not that feelings and opinions don't matter. I mean, I got a lot of opinions. And if you're going to be in a thought leadership space, you better have some opinions. Otherwise, we don't need you. But understand that when feelings get valued more than facts, what happens is we get into a state of chaos where Gatorade is putting out an ad that says Gatorade fit and they have a woman who's clinically obese as their model. That makes absolutely no sense. How are you selling an ad for a fitness product with a person who's fat? It makes no sense. Clinically obese. That's not my opinion. Y'all do the measure. Go to the doctor. They'll tell you what it looks like. This woman was obese. And she's doing a fitness ad. What I'm like, uh, who at Gatorade okayed this? <laughs> and this is the kind of stuff that's going on in the minds of people every single day. It's not about Gatorade. They're just an example. But this is what's going on in people's minds every day. That They're just saying, all right, this is how I feel. So we're just going to go with this. That's going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to cost you a lot of time. And remember that you don't have unlimited time. So do not fall for this trap. Your actions have to be measured by results. And you are in a results-based business. So everything should be defaulting to result what is your target result and how are you measuring it simple as that how you feel personally is not as important as the facts everybody got that if you cannot or will not understand this you are either headed for failure or actually you're probably already there you just don't know about it point number three we are, and i'm gonna answer questions at the end so somebody has a question i got how many points i got here just one more point no two more points points three and four after these points i'll address questions so if you have one or a comment, leave it in the comment section and I'll address it. Number three, we are talking today, for those who came in the middle here, how to stop lying to yourself. Number three, remembering that you're in a results-based business, you got to decide what the business is. Is the business, hey, how much uh, money I'm generating, whether or not you, know, you can stay in business, you know, how, how much weight am I losing, how, much, how good of a shape are my clients getting into, you know, what is the business that you're in, what result are you after? And understand that you will get in business or stay in business based on the results that you produce. That's what business is based on. Business is based on results, folks. Not feelings, not opinions. You can feel however you want. You can have whatever opinions you want. Everybody has plenty of opinions. But if you're not producing results, I don't care about your opinion. You know when I start caring about somebody's opinion? When they can help me produce a result. See, if I get into a, a coaching program, I'm in more than one coaching program. I get in somebody's coaching program, the only time I care about their opinion of what I'm doing is when I know that they can help me get to the results that I want. If I believe that, then I'll listen to everything that they say and all of their opinions, and their opinions will start mattering more than my opinions. Why? Because they know how to help me get to a result that I otherwise couldn't have achieved on my own. You must be, what's the word I'm looking for here? You got to be disciplined enough to accept it. Many of you have been conditioned to believe that whatever you think supersedes anything that anybody else in the world has to say, even though you are not even qualified to, for your opinion to even matter. If you're an entrepreneur just starting out, you haven't even made your first $10,000 in business yet, who the hell cares what your opinion is? If you're talking to somebody who's done more business than you, they got more customers than you, they made more money than you, and they have more experience than you, their opinion matters more than yours about your products and services. Why? Because they know more than you do. They have more experience than you. They have achieved more results than you. So their opinion matters more than yours. Many of you would rather go with your own opinion than go with what actually works. CT Jams, what's going on? How are you? Some, you have to learn how to uh, make your opinion uh, there's a word that's escaping me right now, but your opinion has to be lower. Let's just put it that way. It has to be lower than someone else's opinion when you know that they can actually help you out. 
So who is that in your life? So I've asked you a couple times about certain people in your life. Who in your life can tell you the truth about you and you accept it and don't push back, don't argue, don't get mad at them and you will accept it and say, thank you for giving me that honest opinion and you know what, I need to actually listen to that. Yes, humility. That's one of the words that was escaping me. You got to have the humility to accept it. Have the humility to accept when your coach tells you, yo, you need to get in, in better shape and listen to it. I come, I come from the sports world, so... Those of you who are unfamiliar with me, I come from a background of playing sports. And in the sports world, let me tell you something. Your coaches will tell you exactly what it is to your face, and they will tell you in front of everybody. They'll tell you in front of the whole team. They'll tell you in front of your fans, your family, everybody who's watching. They'll tell you exactly what it is. If you're messing up, they'll let you know. If you messed up in the game and everybody saw it, the coach will call you out on it in front of everybody. And if you can't accept that, you will not make it in sports. Now, many of you might not have the experience of playing sports, so you don't know about this, but I do. So I could take that. Again, I told you my whole brain is taking the things that I got from sports and applying them at, in the business world and applying them in everyday life. The difference between me and all, a bunch of other athletes who also play sports is that I can articulate this stuff in ways that most athletes cannot. That's my skill. All right, that's why you see these books back here. I know what I'm doing. You have to be able to accept that feedback from somewhere. I don't know where. It could be me, it could be somebody else, it could be something. But you have to get that feedback from somewhere. It should not be you. I said that like three times already. You are unqualified to judge your own work. This is not a feelings-based business. This is not an opinion-based business. It is a results-based business. There are zero businesses in the world that can sustain over a long period of time based on feelings and opinions. Zero. No businesses in the world sustain based on feelings and opinions. So Gatorade, that Gatorade Fit ad with that clinically obese woman, I guarantee you they're not going to keep running that ad for a long time. Now, it was, they, got a, they got a few brownie points with the, with the woke audience for running that ad. I guarantee you they're not going to keep running it or they're going to discontinue that product, one or the other, because the results are not going to come in. Because actual fit people are not going to be moved by that ad. We're going to look at that and say, what the hell is Gatorade doing? Right, let me go get some Powerade. Let me go get some, some body armor. I ain't buying Gatorade if that's what they're doing. That ain't going to work. It's the results. Again, it ain't about my opinion of the woman or the ad or Gatorade. It's the results are not going to come in because they're trying to talk to one audience, but they're giving a message that is in complete conflict with what they're trying to sell. Makes no sense. Does it? Does it make sense to you? Does it make sense to me? So anyway, everybody has feelings. Not everybody has a business. Everybody got it? Everybody has feelings and opinions. Not everybody has results or business. So which one do you want to be? The person with feelings and opinions or the person with results and business? Sometimes you got to choose between the two. Point number four. Last point. We are talking today why you need to stop lying to yourself. Since you are in a performance and a results-based business, all your decisions should be based on what actually works rather than what you want to work. What you want to be the truth versus what actually is the truth are often two different things. I want things to be this way, but things actually are this way. Which one wins? And some of you actually got to think about this. Which one wins? How you want things to be or how things actually are. If you have to think too hard about this, you got some work to do. You need to hire yourself a coach. You need to go see a therapist. You need to go do something. You need to do some work on yourself. Some serious work on yourself. And work on yourself doesn't mean just sit around thinking about it. It means actually go do something. Make a commitment and take some actions to go to work on yourself. Everything you do should be based on what produces the results. Your only affiliation is to results, at least in this business of results-based. Now, if you're in a different kind of business, okay, you could base it on that. But everything in a results-based business should be based on what produces results. So for me, for example, I got like, 20, 30 different things that I think I'm great at, that I'm good at, that I can help people with, that I think, I believe, my opinion, my feeling, people should pay me for like 20 or 30 different skills that I have. I believe that. All right, That's my feeling. However, when I go out into the marketplace and I put my message out there, there's maybe three or four things that people are really interested in. Out of my 30, is three or four things that I keep getting responses to. Three or four things that people are like, Dre, I like when you talk about that. I like this piece right here. When I talk to people who have already you know, paid me, hired me, worked with me, and I ask them, what is it about my message and my approach and what I do that you actually like, is the same three or four things that come up over and over again. So guess what I do? I take the other 25 things that I think I'm good at, and I put them to the side and I focus on the three or four things that the marketplace is responding to. Why? Because that's the objective way to run a results-based business. 
Why? Because my business is based on the results. And the result is, this is what people are looking to buy. And I'm in the business of making sales. So guess what I'm going to focus on? The things that people are buying. Not the things that I want them to buy, but the things that they are actually buying. Can you do that? Steve Jobs. Y'all know who Steve Jobs is? For those of you who don't, he's the guy who created these devices that you're watching me on right now. He created the iPhone and he's the brains behind Apple. All right, all y'all got right now, I got Apple everything. Apple phone, Apple tablet, Apple computer, all y'all, Apple AirPods, all the Apple everything. And most of you do too. I know because I see the stats. So here's the thing. When Steve Jobs, he started Apple back in the 80s. He was in the company. He got kicked out of his own company when they went public. He came back to the company. They were about to go bankrupt. A lot of y'all don't know this story. Y'all should read the book called Steve Jobs. It's called Steve Jobs and the author's name is Walter Isaacson. It's a really good book. And Walter Isaacson wrote many profiles of people that y'all should read the biographies. But anyway, when Steve, Apple was about to go out of business in the late 90s. A lot of y'all don't know this. Apple would not exist. The iPhone, none of this would exist. They were about to go out of business. And they bought Steve Jobs back. He had started this company called Pixar. Y'all remember Toy Story and those movies? Finding Nemo, I think they did also. He created that company. Then he came back to Apple. And they were on the verge of insolvency, meaning bankrupt. And Steve Jobs said, are we going to fix this? So this is what he did. At the time, Apple had all these different products. They had like 20, 30, might have been 100 different products that they were selling. Apple at the time. Steve Jobs went through their product line, all the products they were selling, and he just started killing products off. Like, this one, we're not selling this no more. Kill this off. That's gone. That's gone. He just started deleting products. And they narrowed it down to where they were selling, like, three different products. Here were the three products they had left. A desktop computer, a laptop computer, and a, like, a uh, for, like, business type of people computer. Like, not for consumers like me and you, but like a business kind of computer that you would have in a in like a in like an engineer or something like that would work. They narrowed it down to three products. Then they eventually expanded, quote unquote, expanded to the iPhone, the iPod. Y'all remember the iPod with the music, and eventually the iPad, the tablet. What does Apple sell these days? All y'all been in the Apple store? How many products does Apple sell? I'm talking about main products, not the little accessories and little pieces and wires and stuff. How many products does Apple sell? I'll answer all the questions at the end. If anybody got a question, just hold on to it and I'll answer all the questions. Apple sells the phone. They make most of their money off this, off the phone. Then they have the tablet, which is the iPad, and they got the computer. Now, the computer, they got two of them, right? They got the laptop and you have the desktop. What else does Apple sell? They got the AirPods, if you want to call it. AirPods is like an accessory. I don't even count that. Apple sells four products. That's it. Four products. Phone, tablet, desktop computer, laptop computer. And Apple has billions of dollars. I think Apple does more business than any other company in America. You got Apple, you have Amazon, you got Walmart, you got Nike. I think Apple's number one. I don't know the, the latest to date stats, but they're in the top five. We can all agree to that, right? They sell four products. Now, all the people that work at Apple, think about this. Apple has a bunch of people working for them, right? A bunch of smart people with high school diplomas, college degrees, PhDs. I'm a PhD, right? All PhDs, all that, all that stuff, right? All these people are really, really smart people. These are technology people, so they're geeks. They're nerds. Do you think between all the people working together at Apple combined that they could come up with at least 100 new ideas for new products? With all, those, all the brain power they have working there? That they could come up with at least 100 new product ideas if they wanted to. And they probably are working on them in the background. But despite the fact that they got all those smart people with all those ideas, they sell four products. Phone, tablet, desktop, laptop. Why? Because that's what the market wants. Apple doesn't need 100 products. They need four products. And they focus on those four. You go in the Apple store. And I go, every time I see an Apple store, I go in it. And this was funny. I'm not in the market to buy anything from Apple. I bought everything I got on my desk right now, I bought within the last year from Apple. This phone, this computer, and this tablet, all within the last year. I don't need anything new from Apple. But every time I see an Apple store, I go in it just to look at the stuff. And it's the same three products. So they only got three products. They got a phone, a tablet, and computers. That's it. The only thing I don't have from Apple is a desktop computer. I got a laptop. I don't really need a desktop. That's it. They got four products. Ain't nothing else to see. There's nothing to do in the Apple store but look at the same four products over and over again. But every time you walk past the Apple store, you ever seen an Apple store empty? Think about that. 
Has any of you ever seen an Apple store empty? When an Apple store opens in the morning, there's people standing in line to go in the Apple store. For what? The phone, the tablet, <laughs> the computer. It's the same three products. You get the product online. Why is it people always standing in line to get in the Apple store? They got three products. Or four. Let's just say four products. Most people ain't. I think most people get the laptop, the tablet. Most people just buying the phones for the most part. The first thing you see you walk in is a bunch of phones, right? Three products. Three and a half. We'll just say four. We'll, get, we'll be nice and say four. That's it. They got like 30 people working in there and that store is 30 people working in there. Why? And they got all those geniuses working there. All those smart people between the workers and the stores. Who, who knows how smart they are? They're, those are entry level workers. No, no, uh, that's not a knock on anybody who works at, Apple, at the Apple store. I'm talking about the people at the main, the main place over in Silicon Valley. All right, those people are really, really smart. They can come up with plenty of ideas. They got four products. Why? Because that's what the market wants and that's all they need to do. And there are a billion dollar company of four products. You don't need a thousand ideas. You need one good idea. And you just need to push that one good idea. Steve Jobs' best idea ever was we're going to kill off all these products and focus on one thing. So understand that when Steve Jobs came back to Apple, when they were about to go out of business and he came back and saved the company, there was no, the iPhone didn't exist. There was no such thing as a smartphone when he came back to Apple. We had cell phones. Those of you old enough, y'all remember cell phones? All you could do on that phone was call people and text. That's it. You, there was no pictures. There was no video. There was no scrolling. You could make a phone call and you could send a text. That's all you could do. So at the time, there was no smartphone. All it was, CJ said, we're going to focus on a personal computer for a person who's not like an engineer. They're not a geek. They don't want to take the computer apart and look at all the pieces on the inside. We're just going to make a computer for the everyday person who doesn't need to open up the computer. They just want a computer. They can open it up and start, I mean, open it up, like lift the tab, lift the lid open, and just start using the computer without having to be a, a, a techie. Those are the kind of people that we want to make computers for. That's all. That was Steve Jobs' one idea, and that's the reason why Apple's a billion-dollar company to this very day. Why? Because that's what the market wanted. Not because that's what Steve Jobs wanted. Steve Jobs might have. A, Steve Jobs probably had a thousand ideas. Apple became a billion dollar company off one idea. Then he came up with a second idea, was the phone. Then the third idea was the tablet or the iPod. You can put the iPod in there too. So let's just say four ideas: iPod, phone, tablet. And then he made the phone, and he basically put all those in one device. If y'all, any of y'all, go look this up on YouTube after this. This is over. Look it up on YouTube. When Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone, there was a, a presentation that he did. You know how these days you'll hear Apple's doing a, a live event and they're going to, you know what they're going to do. They're going to announce the new phone, new iOS. But go look up on YouTube after this is over the video when Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone. And what he says, he pulls the phone out of his pocket and he says over and over again, he says, we took a, a computer and an MP3 player and a phone and we put them all in one device and he says it like two times or three times in a row and everybody in the audience starts laughing because he's trying to push the he's trying to make sure you understand what we're doing we took the MP3 player with all the music a computer where you can browse I think he might have said a web browser so you can go on the internet and a phone and we put it all in one device that fits in your pocket and he was holding the phone up and y'all remember the first iPhones are smaller than this and they, did, they didn't even do that much compared to what these do and that's how Apple became Apple. Steve Jobs passed away like over 10 years ago. That's why I said it to all of you. Go get the book called Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson and read it. Those of you who don't like reading, you need to start liking it. The smart people read. So go get that book and go look up that video on YouTube. I know y'all like watching YouTube videos. But anyway, you're in a performance-based business. There's a difference between going off your opinions and going off the market. The marketplace will tell you what they want. And oftentimes... What the marketplace wants is a small percentage of what you want to give them. And you need to be smart enough and humble enough and confident enough to say, you know what? I'm not going to put aside all the other stuff that the market is not interested in. I'm going to focus on this one thing that they want. This is the thing that they want. We're going to focus on this one thing because this is the thing that they're responding to. All right, they're responding to this. So we're going to kill off everything that they're not responding to. And we're just going to focus on the one thing that they are responding to. I'll give you another example. All right, what app are y'all watching this on right now? We're on an app called Instagram, right? There used to be this app back in around 2010, 2011. It was called Bourbon, B-U-R-B-N. I wrote about this in my book. Uh, my book is called Work On Your Game, and I'm just pulling up my Instagram. This is my Instagram right here. So this app Bourbon, right, it was like Yelp. Y'all know Yelp? 
which is the app where you go check in and you check in at a restaurant or a museum or a hotel and you take pictures and you talk about how you liked it or you didn't like it and all that. So this app bourbon was like, yo, where you could do check ins and stuff like that. And the app was OK, but it, it was doing OK in the marketplace, but it wasn't doing that great. So the guys who created bourbon, one of the guys name was Kevin. They were looking at it and they're like, this app's not really taking off the way we wanted to. So they were about to shut the app down. But then they took one last look at it and they said, all right, was one piece of the app that is doing really good. And that's the part where people can post pictures because they had this thing where you could post pictures, you could put little filters on the pictures and you could post those. They, they looked at it and said, well, look, the pictures part is the most, that's the part of the app that people are using the most. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to shut down this, we're going to strip down this app and we're only going to keep the part where you post pictures. Everything else we're going to get rid of. All the check-ins and the, the reviews and all that stuff. We're going to kill all that. We're just going to focus on this part of where you could post a picture and put a filter on it. So they shut all that down and they relaunched this app, but they changed the name. They weren't going to call it Bourbon anymore. They changed the name of the app and you know what they called it. I already kind of gave it away to you. They changed the name to Instagram. And now Instagram is Instagram. And all of y'all know, when Instagram first blew up, what was it? All you could do on Instagram was post a picture with a filter. That's it. There was no video. There was no reels. There was no story. There was no live. All it, it was no, you couldn't buy anything. All you could do was post a picture with a filter. Instagram is Instagram because they had one great idea. Not a thousand pieces, one idea. Why did they get, how did they get to that one idea? Because that's what the market was telling them they wanted. You need to look at what the market wants from you, not what you want from you. Many of you are so focused on yourself and your ego that you're not even focused on what the market is telling you. If the market is not interested in something that you're offering, they're giving you a loud and clear message that they're not interested. Get a better idea. Get a different idea. Kill that idea and get a new one. If the market is not interested kill the idea and you should be able to discern this very quickly it shouldn't take you three months to figure out that the market is not interested in something you should find out fast because in business you don't have time to waste all that being said let me see what else i got here i'm gonna address all the questions i know i had some questions in the comment section let me i'm gonna address those in a minute so make sure you're not make sure you decondition yourself if you found yourself in this way of defaulting to your feelings and opinions rather than objective facts because what happens is you'll start op operating by a backwards, inaccurate formulas. And when you operate by inaccurate formulas, you're going to get yourself in trouble quickly. So don't decide on things and then try to figure it out later. Right, get an objective way of measuring your work and decide based on the objective measurements. This is how you create sustainable success. So with all that said, I'm going to recap these points. You got a question post in the comments right now. I'm about to address all questions. So the topic is how do you stop? Lying to yourself, I find this happens with a lot of people these days, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of uh, strong-minded individuals, which is a good thing to be strong-minded, but also you have to know when to put your ego out front and when to put your ego aside. And many people have not developed that balance. Number one, you need a system for objectively measuring yourself and your actions. If you don't have one, you are in trouble. Number two, get clear on your desired result and measure your actions based on results, not on your feelings and opinions. Number three, remember that you're in a results-based business. Everything should be based on what produces a result, not how you think and how you feel. And number four, being that you're in a performance and a results-based business, your decisions should be based on what actually works rather than what you want to work. And if you want something to work and it's not working, you have to look in the mirror and say, okay, I wanted this to work, but it's not working. So I'm going to kill this off and let's focus on what does work. Just like the guys at Instagram, just like Steve Jobs at Apple, just like Jeff Bezos at Amazon. These are all huge companies who focused on what worked, not just on their personal opinions. So make sure you are not making this, this, this uh, mistake. All that said, let's get into the questions here. So if you got a question, post in the comments. I'm addressing all questions right now. Uh, shout out to Sapphire. She says she used to watch the ball videos. And let's see, basketball videos, that is. And Keith said... He said something about a white power structure and talking about the uh, Keith's top Keith's comment had nothing to do with what I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway, so this is what I'm talking about. The results based business. People have their own agendas when it has nothing to do with the actual result or the topic. And this is how people run themselves into brick walls. But let's see who has a, a comment that actually has something to do with what I'm saying. So... 
what brand does a group of black guys have in America today that's influencing all black America? What the hell does that have to do with what I'm talking about? Who knows? Anyway. Raquel says, uh, somber mornings tells me to exercise mommy's small booty. I don't even know what that, exercise my small booty. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Mel Joyful Peace, what's going on? How are you? Let's see, let's see. Somber mornings, what's going on? I'm addressing questions now, so if you have one related to the topic, go ahead and post it while I'm scrolling through the comments right now, and I shall address. Raquel said you have no friends. You don't have anybody that can uh, be objective with you and tell you the truth. Well, you need to get some, even if you need to hire them. Right, but you need to get some people around you who can tell you the truth. And when I say hire them, I mean get a coach, join a mastermind, get into an accountability group. You need to do something. But you got to get around quality people, not just anybody. You got to get high quality individuals. Always training. So you keep real with us directly and indirectly in a way that's a form of a relationship. Yes, that's true. But you get, at some point you need to go deeper because if it was just as simple as if it was just as simple as uh, following somebody on social media, then there would be no need for coaching programs, courses, books, live events. There would be no need for any of that stuff. Masterminds. If all you could, all you need to do is just follow somebody on social media, then you no, know, everybody would be doing it. Listen, I could easily save my money and not go to events, not take courses, not sign up for coaching, all of that stuff. So you need to take it, take it a level deeper. Uh, the freeloading is not the. It's like you have to invest at the level that you want to earn. You got to at least make some kind of investment if you want to make a multiple on it. Because if you multiply by zero, you get zero. So that's the way the game works. Yes, humble diet, humble yourself to understand that is not just all about your uh, personal opinion. So Nadim, Nadim Sai Sahaya, we'll just say Nadim says, "I'm doing great." He says. How would you deal with starting something but procrastinate, starting again, and procrastinating in a cycle? That's what I struggle with. Any advice? Read my book, The Third Day. It's all about showing up and giving your best effort when you least feel like it. So it's about getting out of that procrastination loop, that cycle that you're talking about there. And you get that book by going to thirddaybook.com. I'll post the link to that. Thirddaybook.com is where you can get that book. Uh, who was that that posted that comment? Nadine. I just posted that link. Uh, Matt says, makes me wonder what's more powerful, mathematics or articulated speech? Both. I mean, if you can articulate via mathematics, you can take the objective stuff and articulate it, then you combine them both. They're not opposed to each other. Steve, yeah, Steve Jobs did his thing. John says, I've been changing my mindset, reading, listening to audiobooks. I've learned so much so far about business, minding, mindset branding etc that's great that's great that you've been making that investment in yourself john good stuff keep it up fitness preacher tv what's going on john says what's the best way to fight procrastination well yeah somebody nadim asked the same question get my book the third day that's how you can start so that you understand the the structurally structurally the foundation of what to do about it the next step is you got to put a strategy in place and in my book, at the end of the book, the last chapter, I lay out a strategy for you to actually employ the third day mentality and apply it in your life and in your business. But you have to have a strategy. It's not just about uh, getting motivated or hyped up or excited. It's about having a strategy in place and employing a strategy. Many people try to get to an outcome without a strategy. They think, well, let me just get excited or motivated or push myself or beat myself up or I got to you know, focus more. All of those things are good. Focus is good. Mindset, discipline, mental toughness, confidence. I talk about these things, but you need strategy. Strategy is a plan of action. You need a plan. Everyone who succeeds, every business that succeeds, there's a plan. Amazon had a plan. Apple had a plan. Walmart has a plan. These companies have plans. They don't just randomly do stuff and hope that it works out. Whole Foods has a plan. Do you have a plan? If you don't have a plan, then you are not on your way to success. You might be able to maintain, but you are not on your way to success if you don't have a plan. Strategy is a plan. So at Work On Your Game University, that's the link right there to my coaching programs. That's where I help you put together a plan. We start with mindset because you have to understand it. Then we go into strategizing, accountability, and execution. 
So that's how you get to the outcomes. But you have to have a you have to have a process here. You can't just randomly do stuff and hope that it works out. Let's see here. Nadim says, "How do you deal with doing something and procrastinating?" Oh, you already answered that. So third day, maybe because I'm seeing no results at first. Well, then that might be because you have a poor strategy, Nadim. That might also be the problem. So if you're doing something and not getting results then it might be because you have a poor strategy. It also might be because you're aiming for the wrong thing. It might be because you're working with an inaccurate formula. It might be because you need to give it more time. But I don't know because I don't know you. It could be any one of those things. And this is why, but it's good that you asked that question, Nadim, because this is why you need the right people around you. Because, Nadim, based on your question and what I just told you, how are you ever going to know which one is actually the problem? You probably will not figure it out on your own. And you are not qualified to figure it out because it's your situation. You're not going to see certain things because it's you. This is why you need someone else to take a look at what you're doing. You need another set of eyes on your work who can objectively look at your situation. You can't be objective about yourself. So they can objectively look at your situation and tell you what's really going on because you are not qualified to tell yourself. And again, this is where many people run in the walls is they try to do everything on their own. They think, well, I can just you know, watch some Instagram videos and watch some YouTube and listen to some audio books and I'll figure it out. But then they never figure it out because they don't follow what I just said. So you got to get another set of eyes on your stuff, Nadine, whoever that is, coach, parent, brother, sister, uh, join the program. You got to do something besides what you've been doing up to this point because what you've been doing up to this point got you to the point that you're asking this question and if you're asking this question that means you're in a you're in a position of stagnation and you need to get out of that position and you won't get out of it by doing the same stuff that got you into it Raquel says do you think someone needs to be sober to be successful what do you mean sober you mean sober like not drinking alcohol you mean literally sober if that's what you mean the answer is yes because alcohol is a drug so drugs, they alter the, the chemistry of your brain. So if the brain, if your brain chemistry is altered, you're probably not going to, you're probably not going to perform at your highest possible level. So if that's what you, if you mean that literally, then I mean, then my answer is absolutely yes. You do need to be sober. Doesn't mean you can't have a drink, but you can't be uh, inebriated and become successful because your brain chemistry is off. Now, if you've had an issue with alcohol abuse, then you probably need to be completely cold turkey off of it 100%. If that's the way you mean it. Nadim says, sounds good. I've been following you for so long. I was giving gold advice, so I appreciate it. Glad you asked. Thank you for asking the question, Nadim. John, same thing. Good stuff. Sober, no drugs. Yeah, stay off the drugs. Say no to drugs, everybody. Nadi used to have, I don't know if any of you is old enough, back in the 90s, you used to have commercials that said, say no to drugs. You remember those commercials? Where it'd be like, say no to drugs, or this is your brain on drugs, and they would show eggs frying in a frying pan, and they would say, this is your brain on drugs, and they were trying to scare you away from doing drugs. What happened to those commercials? Now it's okay to do drugs. <laughs> now they, now they, they want you to do drugs. They used to have commercials telling you not to do drugs. They used to have commercials that tell you not to smoke. They used to have commercials, what other commercials these days? No, don't drink and drive. There used to be commercials for this stuff, and there was big marketing campaigns around these things, which are good ideas, but now they don't do those commercials anymore because now people will probably try to cancel them and get mad at them. But this is where we're going. <laughs> this, is, this is where we're at. This is why you got you to gotta make sure you're checking yourself on these things now. Now, because they used to tell you, they used to have campaigns to tell you this stuff. Now you got to figure it out, and you got to get people around you who will tell you these things. But they used to do big marketing campaigns. The government used to pay for this stuff. I don't know what the government is paying for now. Now they're paying for uh, boys to say that they're girls. And you're not allowed to tell them anything. not allowed to say anything. Let's see. Who else we got? All right. Somebody else has a question. I'll take one or two more and then we'll wrap this one up. Hope everyone has gotten some value out of this. This will be up on the the IG live tab on my Instagram. So just go to that little tab there and you'll see these. You'll see all the lives that I did. They'll be up there. But if you like to watch it on a faster speed, then of course you can go over to YouTube. This will be on YouTube probably in about a week. This will go up on YouTube. So you can watch it there. And uh, I might put it on Facebook too. I don't know if Facebook lets you control the speed, but I'll probably put it on Facebook too. Questions is, do I do lives every morning? Most mornings I do lives. They're not always at the same time, Nadim. So you just got to just follow me on IG and put on your notifications. So if I go live, you'll know about it. 
I do them most days, but not every single day, and they're not always at the same time. And also not always the same length. Sometimes I go longer, sometimes shorter. So I'll take like one more question. If somebody else has a question, I'll take one more, and then we'll wrap this up. Anybody else got a question? I'm going to give you like, it's 12.28, you got till, I'm going to give it till 12.30, somebody post a question, and we'll wrap up. And oh yeah, let me put my daily motivation text number in here. If you want to get my daily motivation that I send out every day, just text me at that number. Every day when I send out my daily motivation message, that message is guaranteed, yes, guaranteed, to get you focused, sharp, and on point every single day. If you want to get that message, just text me at that number that you see right there, 305-384-6894. It is free of charge. Just text me and you'll be in my text community and you'll be getting my daily motivation every day. And the bonus is you can actually respond to one of those texts and I'll respond back to you. I do actually respond to my text. That's not a bot. That's not, I don't outsource that to my team. I actually handle my own text messages. So you want to get that every day. I spend time going through my texts. I'm about to actually, when I get off this live, I'm going to respond to the text that I have right now. So that number right there. So there, Raquel told you right there. I do respond back to text. And yes, that is me responding. So when you get a response, that is Dre, whatever I said, that's me saying it. Uh, question is, can you balance multiple avenues or is it best to stick to one? Only if they're symbiotic, uh, Raquel. I mean, you can balance. You can balance anything. You can balance 10 avenues if you really needed to. But to get your best out of each, the best way is if they're symbiotic, meaning they serve each other. So, for example, if I like to play basketball and I like to lift weights, they serve each other because my weightlifting will help me play basketball. But if I'm doing two things that are completely not serving each other, now I'm giving half my attention to this and half my attention to that. And now I can't be great at either one because I'm not giving my full attention to either one. It's kind of like, like a basketball player trying to be a rapper. Now, you ever heard a basketball player who was good at rapping? I haven't. And I've heard all of them rap and none of them is good. <laughs> Why? Because they're trying to do more than one thing at the same time. Shaquille O'Neal, I remember he was rapping in like the 90s. But when he stopped rapping, he started winning championships. That's just a fact. When he stopped making rap albums, he started winning championships. When he was making rap albums, he wasn't winning any championships. And the rapper, the basketball players who's trying to rap today, they ain't winning no championships. The players who win championships, all they do is play basketball. Michael Jordan, all he did was play basketball. He didn't do anything else. Kobe Bryant, all he did was play basketball. When LeBron was winning championships, all he was doing was playing basketball. I don't know what he's doing now. I mean, LeBron's older now, so I'm not knocking LeBron. LeBron, when he was winning championships and dominating, all he did was play basketball. That's it. Two things. You can't chase two rabbits, as they say. You'll end up catching either one. Question is, am I from Missouri? No. Where where'd you get that idea? Where'd you get that question from? <laughs> I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, born and raised in West Philadelphia, born and raised. No, I'm not from West Philadelphia. I'm from Mount Airy, Philadelphia, and I live in Miami. I don't know if I have I ever even been to Missouri. I have been to Missouri. I have been to Missouri, but I am not from Missouri. Shout out to Missouri, but I am not from there. <laughs> uh, so I talk like your friend, Somber Morning. Somber Morning's from Missouri. No, I'm not from Missouri. But I guess we're on the same wavelength, though, at different places. All right, everybody. So we will wrap this one up here. This will be on YouTube. It will be on my IG Live tab. Text me to get my daily motivation text. If you're ready to get serious, if you're already serious and you're ready to do something about the fact that you're serious about taking your game, your business, your life to the next level strategically, not just emotionally, but strategically, then go to workonyourgameuniversity.com and let's start getting to work. And what else I got to say? That's it. We'll wrap this one up. Everybody have a good Friday, good weekend. Work on your game. We out of here.